Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you for the wonderful things you're doing. Please and God us in your righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. I am Senior Pastor of the House of Permanent Streets, Pastor Ray Smith, along with my lovely wife, Pastor Alice Smith. Amen. And this is where God is glorified with Jesus Christ is Lord, the Holy Spirit is welcome. So we welcome you, those in the congregation, and also those in their audience. We welcome you. Amen. Okay. Uh, so the Lord has a word for you today that this word is his rest. Amen. Do you know that we have a supernatural ministry? And why is our ministry supernatural? Because we serve a supernatural God. If you look through the Bible, the Bible is a supernatural book. <laughs> and, you know, not just, you know, it shows all sorts of things that happen that you may consider impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. And throughout the history of the Bible, he shows who he is, that nothing is outside his reach. Nothing's too hard for him. You know, his eyes is not dim, his ears, you know, his his ears are not heavy. There's nothing wrong with our God. He is just as unique today as he was 20,000 years ago. Amen. Just even before the foundation of the world and even after everything is done and said, like in Revelation, he's still the same God. Amen? Amen. And the thing about it is that he is a supernatural God. And so because he's a supernatural God, his offspring are what? Supernatural. Amen? So we're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 11. We're talking about his rest. Amen? Amen. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Amen. Amen. What the Lord is saying. All right. It says, 11, uh, Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So in this life, you know, <coughs> there's struggle. There's heaviness, there's hardness, there's disappointment, you know, all these things, you know. And of course, life does teach you lessons that if you want to be successful in life, you have to strap your boots up, you know, you know, get yourself together and just walk the walk and be strong, right? But still, even in all that, even doing the right things, there can be a heaviness, there can be a hardness, there can be a difficulty. And see, and as you continue to live, live life, as the years continue, there could be a heaviness that comes upon you. Even though we age, that you can be even more aged by the things you go through. All right? Then it says here, come unto me. And Christ is saying this. Come unto me, all you that labor now, heavy leg, late, and I will give you the rest. Amen? And this is rest from your labors. All right? What are you laboring? What are you trying to accomplish? What is your um, what is your goal? And how are you trying to accomplish it? What is your vision? What is your life all about? You say your life could be all about your children, all right? And maybe not 100%, but maybe 80% is your children. Or you can say, you know, your life is about your career. 80 to 90% of what you do, of what you believe, or what your stroke lives, or what you um, persevere in is your career. All right? And sometimes the other thing could be what you're seeking after. You're seeking after success, or you're seeking after treasure, or you're seeking after something that you know is sensitive, that is kind of unique, and you go over this, over this treasure hunt. Like, you know, maybe you go for lost treasure, or maybe you're just trying to find success in another way. You want to be a millionaire. You're trying to find ways to make yourself wealthy or whatever. Or maybe else, you know, you're seeking after love right and you want to be loved you're going around all, all the wrong ways you know to be loved but you're seeking after something your life is about something and what is your life about what is your struggle what are you going after what is it you have considered that is good and you feel like you didn't go after or work for it, or you know or just consider and just say wow this will make my life better if i just had that and now i want to go after it and so as you continue to go after these things and work for these things and labor for these things. God is saying, no, 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 no. Your eyes are on the wrong thing. Your eyes should be on me. Come unto me. Come unto me. You are seeking love. You are seeking treasures. You are seeking success. You are seeking all these things. No, he said, come unto me. 
Come unto me, and I will give you rest. And, you know, and he said, well, wow, what about all the things I'm wanting, all the things I'm looking for, all the things? He just said, come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me. The scripture that I didn't put down here, but the scripture says, uh, it's Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. See, we don't re recognize this. We don't realize this. But when God said, come unto me, we say, wow. He's providing me salvation. He's providing me a relationship. He's providing for me that when I die, I can go to heaven. But we don't just recognize this. All the other things are included too. What were you seeking after? Amen. Amen. Everything else you are seeking after is in him. So he said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Now let's go to Exodus chapter. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Amen. And verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Now, this is the Old Testament. And this is where, you know, those are a lot of things, you know, Moses and Israel, they had gone through and had great enemies and had been in great bondage. And, you know, and now he's he's leading the people to something better, but they did not have spirit. See, this is what's so interesting. What are you seeking after? Let's say you're seeking after, let's say you're seeking after marriage, and you've never been married before. You know, you may have seen people married, but you don't know what it's going to be like for you. Maybe you're seeking after, um, maybe you want to have a business. You never had a business before, but now you want one. You don't know what it's like, but you feel like it's good. But whatever it is, maybe you want to be, um, you want to be successful in the area. It could be music, it could be business, it could be science, it could be <laughs> art. Where you see yourself in this area of success that will propel you, all right, into the highest places of whatever you're looking at, what you're endeavoring in. Amen? But you've never been there before. You don't know why you've been there before. So you know what's going to be like when you get there. And so God said he's going to take you there. But he said, well, wow, but you, you know, you want, I'm going to have that, but and, and most of like, I'm shaking. How am I going to get the work? God says this. He said, my presence shall go with you. All right? And I will give you rest. So I'm going to be with you. You don't have to worry about anything. Amen? Just rest in me. All right? And I will go with you. And I'll take everything that concerns you. And that's what he's saying today to, you, to his people. If you will trust me, like the song said, if you will put your trust in him, amen, you know, you will, you will not be shaken. Amen. Now, Matthew 11, 29. And it's like we're going back to Matthew 11, 28. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor, not, and are heavy late, and I'll give you rest. But now we're going to verse 29. And it says, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I make it lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So we have to learn of him. We have to learn and we have to receive. Amen. Because if we don't learn and receive, then we will not enter in. All right? Because when we learn him, we begin to trust in him. Amen. We begin to trust in him and begin to give our life to him. Amen. When we don't learn about him, you know, as the Bible, as the, as the gospel is preached to us, amen, we begin to build our faith by what we learn, amen. And by we build our faith by what we learn, we begin to trust in God, trust in the Savior, trust in Jesus Christ, trust in the gospel. And then we begin, as we trust, amen, then what happens is we begin to heal him. Parts of our life, bit by bit by bit. Amen? Now, it says here, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart. So, he's not going to put too much on you that you can bear. Amen? He's not trying to like, like man would do, like just put a whole bunch of stuff on you. He doesn't do that. He says he will, uh, what really, the great burden is really on him for it, it is on you. All right? If there's a burden on us, it's the burden of like 
taking off what's on us, like pride or envy, you know, all the stuff that we want to keep. Oh, I want to, I, 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 so when we learn things in the world, we got to be sure we can't trust a lot of people. You can only trust yourself. So I have to have everything in control. I have to control my finances. I have to control the media. I have to control everything about what I have. If I have employees, I have to control. You have to control. You have to control. You have to control because you can only trust yourself. But God has said, no. You have to release your employees. You know, you have to release, release if you have a business that has to deal with media. You have to release the media. You have to release all these different areas and let him have it. It says here again, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I make a lonely heart and you shall find rest in your own soul. So now when you give all of to God, now you don't have to work anymore. You're at rest. Amen. But we have to learn of him. <laughs> because we do not, we will never give it to him. Amen. Amen. Now, Hebrews 3, 11. Let's turn there. And I pray you're turning the pages. God is a supernatural God. And I pray that um, you're letting the Holy Spirit move upon your hearts. Amen. Hebrews 3.11. So I swear, God is speaking, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of any of you an evil heart of unbelief in the party from the living God. Amen. And so we've read the scripture before. You need to fear unless a promise of his rest being left that you will not enter in because of unbelief. So because of what's happening with Israel when they came out, because he said they were stiff necked people, all right? They continue, they continue, and they continue, and continue to resist the Holy Ghost. Continue. And so because of that, they will not enter into my rest. <clears throat> and so many of them died in the wilderness and did not go into the promised land. Their children did, but, but except for uh, Caleb and Joshua, even Moses didn't go. But their children did, because they were still that people. So what God said to you, he has provided rest, all right? So you should fear that's the rest that he's presented for you. You will not receive because of what? Unbelief. Now, Hebrews 4 5. So I know we're going a little fast, but I believe what God is saying to you is very clear. Hebrews 4 5. Let's turn it down. And, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. So remember when God says stuff two times or maybe three times? He said, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. He said again, in this place, if they shall enter into my rest, it is impossible that you can enter into his rest. But you have to pay attention. You have to be serious about God. You have to trust and believe. Amen? Now, now we're going to go backwards because now God has set something for your hearts. He set up the stage for you if you can receive it. And I'm sure some of you, many of you can. All right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. We're going backwards. Because we have established something. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering to its rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For as for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, born in my wrath, and they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Amen? Amen. Now, this is a word of, this is really, it's really a prophetic word, but it's a word that's coming from the Lord. It's actually a grammar word. 
that's coming for this church. Are you ready? All right. But before I give you that word, one more scripture. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go to Romans chapter 11, verse 19. You know, when God does it, you don't have to push, you don't have to sweat, you don't have to struggle. You just happen. Mm -hmm. Say that. And so this is going to happen. But I'll share that with you after we read this verse. Romans 11, 19, verse 21. <clears throat> Romans 11, 19. And we'll go to verse 21. So Romans 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 19 through 21. Wilt thou say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in? Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not mingled, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare thee not. Spare not thee. This is going to happen in the House of Prayer Ministries. It's, it's so, when God was showing this to me, we are going to be a church, we're going to be a ministry that actually enters into his rest. The entire body of this church is going to enter into the rest of God. Isn't that awesome? We say, well, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Do you know in the Old Testament it happened with Israel? Do you know that when they were going to battle, you know, they were battle giants. They battled all sorts of people. And you know what? No one would be lost. Not one person would die when they went into battle. And even you know, sometimes they didn't have to leave people walk around and praise God. And then they, you know, and then God would cause the, uh, the walls to fall down. Or God would send his angels. Well, they didn't even have to fight. Amen. They were walking in his rest. Amen. We are in the church. It's going to get to the point that we want to have to, we just have to just God's going to do the work. We just have to be here in the holy. He's going to do the work. He's going to bring forth the ministry. He's going to bring the people. We're just going to be in the rest. So we just the work is going to be done. Just like it was in Israel. Now, this is the key that he's going to say. Because this is the work God, he's going to do it. Whether you believe it or not, he's going to do it. Amen. But guess what? It says here in verse 19, Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Do you know that there was a dying in Israel that the uh, that we as the Gentiles could come in? They actually lost lost out on some things that the Gentiles could come in. But now we come together as the Gentiles and as the uh, as the Jews come together as Christians. They, the Jews can't come in just because of God the Father anymore. They have to come in through Jesus Christ just like we do. Amen? Amen. But they can't enter in. It says here, if God spared not the natural branches. So what happened is there were many lost. There were Jews. And there were God's people. But was many of them were lost in the Old Testament. Why? Because of unbelief. Guess what? For well, this church, as we enter rest, if you will not enter in because of if you if you don't believe, if you don't have faith, if something else comes in like you know pride or envy or or whatever it is, those things are not of God. You will be broken up, and we will go forth. Right. God has promised it. Mm -hmm. This ministry is going to enter into its rest, and there's nothing that the enemy can't do about it. The people who don't believe, the people don't like God, the people want to be a thorn in the side. Because whatever they want to do, they want to be like a, um, like they want to be a Judas, or they may want to be a, a, a sheep of wolf's clothes. It don't matter. They cannot stop what God's doing. This church will enter to the rest, and they're going to be broken off Amen. as we go on. Now, what is it going to look like? Amen. What are you going to believe in for? We know a new church is coming. There's going to be no struggle. This church is going to be filled. No struggle. Prophecies. More prophecy. People coming and getting a prophetic word. No struggle. It's going to be perfectly accurate. Not just through pressure out of the mouth. Perfect accurate. People are coming for healing. 
and they're going to be healed. No struggle. Amen. You know, and we have, see, what happens is this. God will give you drops and bits, you know. He's getting ready to show you that your bullets, but you have little things like this will happen. So, like in our home, before we got here, people walk into our church and get healed. People couldn't hear in one ear. They pop, and then they could hear in the ear, you know. People have had jobs, had struggles with jobs. You know, they come to the altar the same week they got a job, no struggle. He's going to make it easy. And his church is going to go forth in a power and the ammunition of the Lord. Amen. And I don't care if it's a principality. I don't care if it's a rule of darkness. I don't care who is even saying himself. He cannot stop it. Amen. And all that are with him cannot stop it. Amen. So guess what? You're in the right place. Amen. Now, I have presented the word to you. What God is going to do in this place. Amen. What is your part? It says here, and we're going to go back to this. It says, and God has presented this. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, there is a yoke that's placed upon us, right? And learn of me, for I'm weak and lowly heart, and you shall find rest. So this rest, when we enter this rest, is actually almost like a yoke of us, right? Or is this yoke? Because when everybody sees the miracles and everybody sees what's going on, they're going to start persecuting you. All right? And so there's going to be great persecution. There's going to be great separation. There's going to be all types of things that are going to try to come against you to stop you from doing what you're doing. You have to take that yoke upon you. Because what happens is, if you want to reign with Christ, what do you have to do? You have to suffer with him. So as you as you prosper, it's like a yoke upon you. It's like this cloak, amen, that's upon you that you're persecuted, amen, that you're talked about, that people separate from you, that you're looked upon like you're not, you're like you're crazy, you know. They're called you a crazy person. What's wrong with this guy? What's going on? You know, Jesus, is it like Jesus? All the awesome miracles are happening. They said, oh, I see the miracles, but why you have to do it on the Sabbath day? All right? Why you have to do it on the Sabbath day? Why can't you have six other days of the week? The Lord, my Lord, why you have to do it on the Sabbath day? Amen? But see, we understand this. We, it's not us who's doing it. It's God who's doing it. So God does exactly. If you want to do it on the Sabbath day, I have it on the Sabbath day. If you want to do it during the week, you can. He did do it during the week, but some people need to be saved on the Sabbath day. So he breaks the law. He breaks that stuff, that stuff, that stuff that you have put in your mind that this is the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. It's the way that God says it is. Amen? So you have to break tradition. Break that stuff of all this stuff that's in you that this is the way it happens. It has to be this way. No, it has to be God's way. He's breaking all that tradition. And as you wear this yoke upon you, because. <laughs> And see, the thing about it is, it's, it's, it's beautiful that you have this yoke upon you, right? Why is it beautiful? Because if you keep this yoke upon you, right, the pride cannot enter in. If you keep this yoke upon you, you know, then uh, greed cannot enter in. If you keep this yoke upon you, you know, and then all these things like hatred cannot enter in because you have this cloak upon you. So actually, the yoke that's upon you protects you from carnality. But there is a price to pay. Right? Because God's going to let you into his rest. But the price, you have to pay that price. That you have to suffer. That you have to go through. Sometimes I'm telling you, we who have gone through, you know, it is, it, can, it is painful. It's a crushing. And it can mess with your mind, you know. It can mess with your mind because... Why did it have to happen on the seventh day? You know, don't you want to say the Pharisees too? Don't you want to say the Sadducees? God, just do it on the other six days. And then the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they can be saved too. No, they would not. God knows exactly what he's doing. And what it does, it shows the hearts of the people. Amen? Our hearts had to be broken. You know, things were going on our heart. We had to let it go to receive God. So do they. Now, God help me. You know, it's interesting being a Christian. 
And it really is. Because God will have you do things. We had a situation, and we're not going to mention it. Nobody knows the person, except a few people. But like I said, you have to do it God's way. We have the seventh day. There are six days of the week. But no, he God gave me a command. And I must share it. He showed me in the spirit. And I pray that you are letting the Holy Spirit receive let receive also because when the praises and the worship is going up, the pure praise and worship is going up, God will give you visions in your heart. Sometimes they don't, you know, you won't see a vision like, you know, God opens your eyes supernaturally. But many times it's a vision in your heart. You see it in your mind. And don't cast it away because God is showing you something. But anyway, God showed me exactly what to do. And I went about doing it. And someone asked me, can I have the blessing? But can you do it another way? And I could not. Because that's what God has told me to do. And so, y'all have to make a decision. There's certain things that God would have you do. That you'll say, everybody's going to say, well, why are you doing it that way? Why can't you do it the way we're doing it? We're saying too. We know God too. We hear God too. Why can't you do it the way we're doing it? But to keep them fellowship, they don't understand something. I'm going to share this with you. There's something, and I've shared with my ministers. The greatest thing that you have is not your anointing, it's not your gift, it's not your good looks, it's not your purse or, or wallet. The greatest thing you have is your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's just the way it is. And you cannot, you cannot compromise that for anyone. Anyone. So if someone is asking you to do it a different way, you may gain man, you may gain more friends, your ministry may be longer, but guess what? You're losing all of Christ. And see, what happens is this. People are leaving you. So you may, people may leave your company, they may leave your church, they may say things about you that you didn't think they would say about you, and it can be a struggle, but guess what? You're gaining Christ. You're gaining a relationship. You become more intimate with him. You gain because he can trust you. He can trust you. He can trust you. And see, like you're all alone. You know, everybody said, You did. You should have. Why didn't you listen to those people? You could have had a big church. Why didn't you listen to their people? You know, you know, you could have more money. Why didn't you listen to them like they did? You could have, you know, you have the way. So why didn't you do it that way? Why didn't you do it that way? Look at all these other ministers. Guess what? But they don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ. They may have with the people, but not with Christ. And for our ministry and for our leaders, they know it's about Christ. And that's what we teach. It's about knowing him more than anything else. Amen? And so now, when you enter into this relationship, Christ can trust you. Now you enter into this rest that he does the work for you. And your ministry is great. The people come. He makes your name, uh, name that known all over the world. Amen? But guess what? For us, that does not matter. What matters is our relationship with Christ. And that's why some people fall, because they've lost them. So our church is going to that place. And it's up to you to go. It's up to you to go with us or not. And so your natural mind, you may struggle in your natural mind, but be led by your heart. Be led by the Holy Spirit, because that will confound the things of the of the natural, you start doing things. You know, like I said, look, when God was having to do miracles, it just didn't make sense. Why do it this way? But just do it that way, and you will get the miracle. It will just happen. God, why say this? You know, well, you have to say it and say it in faith, and a miracle will happen. Because you have to understand something. It's not just for you, it's for the many. See, we have to enter into this rest so now others can enter in. They have to understand what the real and true God is, what it's really all about, because it's been such a form of godliness, you know, in the church, you know. Oh, preaching, 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 and rhyming, and dancing, all these sort of things, the suits and everything's going on, all the people, look at a nice place, look at the, the quilt, the seats, and everything, and all things, and the sounds, and all the things sound so good, but there's no Holy Spirit. None. And people are saying God is there, but he's not. And how do you know there's no Holy Spirit. My son was talking to me. I was talking to my son about this. I was considering to worship, 
and all these wonderful worships that we see. I said, what's going on with this? Is God's will and everything? He said, there's something going on in this generation. But if I'm a little older than most, so I come out of another generation. He talked about this generation. He said, they want to go into church and feel God's presence, but they don't want to walk in holiness. They want to do what they want to do in the world. Dress the way they want to dress, you know. I'm telling you, God gives you freedom, but he, you can't just dress anyway. They want to say what they want to say. You can't just say anything. I'm telling you, i tell you this, Father, on the anointing of God, God hates, I found this out, God hates a woman with a filthy mouth. He hates filthy mouth anyway, but he really hates it when it comes out of a woman. But there's women in the church have, filthy, you know, I'm talking about using profanity, okay? That's what I'm saying. He does not like it, but say, but some people think it's cool as a Christian, Christian woman who can use profanity and it's cool. No, it's not cool. You know what I mean? You know, other things like this, oh, when he gets fornicated in the church, you know? You know, a lot of athletes that say they're Christians, but they fornicate all the time and they're not married, you know? You know all these things. That's not holy. But when they want to go to church, they want to lift their hands and they want to feel God, you know? Amen? But well, see, even if you're that way, hopefully that will bring you to repentance. But if it doesn't bring you to repentance, then what's the point? And see, the pastors, they say, it's everything okay because my church is full. Then because I'm popular. God's bringing forth a standard. Amen? He's bringing forth a standard. The great news is that God is, this church is going to enter into his rest. And if you're with him, it's great. But if you're not, he will be cut off. Now, I want to pray for you. We have to understand something. I, I want to, if you may, because I want to share things with everyone. Because I know we have holy people here. Who get it? They got it. They get it. All right. They got it. Amen. But I want to speak to the rest, and this is going out all, all over the world. You have to understand something. Christ died for you. I mean, He was on that cross. He was in so much pain and so much agony. Even before that, He was spit upon, and you know, the thorns pierced His head, and it was just a horrible, horrible torture. Even before he got to the cross, he did that for us because we had one judgment. Every person that's born, amen, after Adam, had one judgment, and that was death, and that you'll spend your eternity in hell, and that was for everyone. But Christ came and died on the cross for us that we could have eternal life with him and the Father in heaven. That's what he did for us, amen. He did that for us. So now he's asking you, and the only way you can get out of this judgment is to see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And he wants this for you also, that you can have, you came, that you have life and have it more abundantly. So this is the way it works. You have to enter into his rest. All right? Because if you keep your own works, you want to get the work, you want to get the results of your work, which what is that? <laughs> some temporary, something that's not good. And so you will not get credit for it in heaven. But he's doing things for you, so your reward will be great. Amen? Amen. So you are in the audience. Consider your ways. Consider what you're doing. Because it's good to feel. And much encouragement that you may get from the world, one day you're going to be on a throne. And you have to give an answer. What do you do with the life that God's given you? One, do you receive Jesus Christ? And even after that, what do you do? So this should prepare you for something great. It's your choice. Everyone stand. First, we're going to, do, we're going to pray for the, as a congregation, we're going to pray for the end of the audience, for those who need to repent and those who need to find salvation. Amen. We kind of do a semi turn and point to that camera. Or not saved, or you need to come back to Christ. You can pray this prayer and be right back in right standing. And then after that, we'll give instructions. For those who are in the audience and even in the congregation, repeat after me. Father God, 
I believe. I believe. You said your son. You said your son to die for me. To die for me. I believe. I believe that Jesus. That Jesus is the only way. Is the only way to you, Father. To you, Father. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me if I turn back. Forgive me if I turn back. And Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. And be the Lord of my life. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. I surrender to you right now. Right now. So if you have prayed that prayer, you are now in right standing with Him. And all the things that He died for. And all of these things are the Father to receive. You receive not just for himself, you receive it for you. And so if you have prayed that prayer, send us a text or contact in some way so we can continue to be in fellowship with you, that your journey will be sure. God bless you. And now for those here. I want my prayer words to take their place right now first. All right, okay. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay. Now, I'm going to pray for you as a church, all right? Because this may be new for you. I mean, we all had to come into understanding what Christ had provided for us. You know, we were just born, you know, knowing everything that we need to know. We had to grow up and grow into it. Some of the things now before we grew up, we got saved, we had to actually unlearn. All right? And so God is so willing, wherever you are in your journey, to come in to the full fellowship of him where you really begin to trust him. Sometimes, okay, praise God, you got saved. But you need to trust him. So first, if there's anybody in this congregation that needs to life, needs to give their life to Jesus Christ, just raise your hand. If there's anyone who's not saved, you never got saved, raise your hand. Okay, is there anyone in this congregation that needs to, maybe you're backslidden and you're not in right standing with God, even though you did commit your life to God? Is there anyone like that? Okay. I want to pray a prayer with the congregation. And then you have an individual prayer. Um, we have our prayer worries here. Maybe you feel like you need a word from the Lord, a particular word from the Lord. We have prophet, this is Vanessa Hurst. We have a prophet that was wild. If you believe you need a word, but they can also pray for you. But if you need a word. So everyone lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're doing something in this church supernatural that your hand is upon this church and upon the people now as we have been into your rest and all the miracles and signs and wonders and blessings and manifestations happen i pray father in the name of you jesus that the yoke that you have placed upon us we will be faithful as a church as a body and we will continue all the days of our life to follow your presence to go by your leading to never compromise your word and make you the most important thing in our lives, our relationship with you. We'll never falter, we'll never fail. And this will be a church that you come back for. We present ourselves to you today in Jesus' name. Now, if you have a prayer request, maybe, whatever it is, just come and our prayer work warriors and pray for us.
shall soon see and shall soon behold miracles, many miracles that shall come forth, that shall break forth suddenly as a trumpet sounding, they shall burst forth and I will overturn, I will overthrow, I will lift up, I will elevate, I will promote, and I will prosper. Amen. Praise God, amen. Give God a praise. So again, I'm going to uh, I'm going to adjourn and I'll read up out of 2 Corinthians 13 uh, verse 14 is for everyone here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be upon you all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Everybody hope so one.